talk about the beginning from the sheet that was, that was being passed around. Um, again, we don't have time to go into it tonight. But the legs of iron represented pagan Rome and Nebuchadnezzar statue that he's seen. But its feet of clay and of iron represented Rome in its divided state. Um, and a part of that moving and transitioning from its pagan form to its papal <coughs> form. So, to sum it up, it's important that you don't miss this if you don't catch anything else. The relevance in point number two is that the power, the kingdom that has and that initiates the mark. We have stated that to be now Rome in what form? Pain. No. Like Papal. Papal. So now it's in its religious form. It has put the clothe of Christ over what it's doing. Mm. So whoever the kingdom is that has the mark, it received its position in time and in the world from whoever was employing Herod to wipe Christ out at the time he was born. Mm. And again, the power that was employing Herod was Rome in its what form? Pagan, Pagan, Pagan. form. Mm -hmm. Papal Rome received its position once Pagan Rome made the transition to Papal Rome. So again, point number two is saying whoever this world power is, it received its position, seat, and authority from Pagan Rome. Any questions or anyone need clarity in that position there? That is uh, a key point number two, because whoever the kingdom is that has the mark, it could be Africa, New Zealand, it could be whoever, mm -hmm. it had to have received its position in time from pagan Rome. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brother Gary? Uh, there's two specific things um, that I had questions about. Was one, um, with the sun, um, clothed with the sun, and with the moon underneath her feet. What exactly does that mean? Because I, I have a study Bible, and it's not exactly even there. I mean, it's not any cross-reference to any other scripture that, um, what's the word, uh, explains that type of imagery. Yes, and, and that as well, like I told um, uh, Deacon Antonio, um, what we did, we, we confirmed the point just before you got in, and then we, we went back to clarify the question he mentioned. We're going to do the same thing with that. To make sure I don't lose people's attention span beyond 930, um, don't let me forget, let's get through these 10 points. And the reason why a lot of study Bibles uh, don't elaborate on that, because, again, I, I thank God for the understanding, mm -hmm. and we count it as a privilege and an honor that God has revealed such revelation to us, is a lot of study Bibles, um, a lot of teachers, a lot of preachers in this day and age can't understand a lot of this stuff. So they start talking about chips and marks and codes and a bunch of things like that, and has nothing to do with what thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. But that right there, we'll definitely come back to it, elaborate on that to make sure that by the end, um, you have a complete understanding to um, what's all that about. Point number three. Um, my sister, if you can commence reading again, please. Sure. Point three. Become a worldwide power, verses three and seven. Okay, and before she reads, all this is stating is that whoever is the kingdom that has the mark, has to be recognized as a world power, which before she even reads the rest of the paragraph, wow. we already know the answer to that, mm -hmm. that uh, without question, they are identified as a world power. So we're going to see that so far with three for three. But please read confirmation. Scripture, Revelation 13, 3 and 7, Revelation 17, 8 and 15. In 533 AD, Justinian, an emperor at that time, entered upon his vandal and gothic wars, wishing to secure the influence of the Pope of that era and Catholic party. He issued that memorable letter, which was to constitute the head of all churches. In AD 538, when the last of the three Aryan horns was plucked up, the papal supremacy is to be dated and whoever will read the history of the African campaign 534 through 538 AD will notice that the Catholics everywhere were hailed as deliverers. The army of Basil 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 Basil
sorry. The General of Justinian, Thoughts of Daniel and Revelation, page 136. Continue reading. Note, as soon as the last opposition of the papacy was removed, it became firmly seated by the famous letter of Justinian that the bishop from Rome should be recognized as the head of the universal church and the corrector of heretics. The year 538 AD may be set down as the time when the papacy became an established <coughs> power. Um, that date, that time is uh, vitally important. And you don't have to write it down because thank God we have the uh, information in this study guide. But one of the sections that we're going to look at uh, next coming up um, again, that date of uh, 538 as the time and the reason why um, one of the points being established as a starting point is due to this specific letter right here. The letter that went forth that the Bishop of Rome should be recognized as the head of the universal church and the corrector of heretics. So as of 538, that's going to be our starting point from confirming one of the points in identifying the beast, which is actually point number five. But before we get there, um, let's continue on with uh, point number four. Do you need a break, my sister? You doing okay? Okay. You hanging there? Okay. Point number four. Has the name of and is guilty of blasphemy. Verse one, five, and six. Scriptures, Revelation 13, verses one, five, and six. Daniel... 7, 8. The Bible gives its definition of, blas of blasphemy. See John 10, 27 through 33, and Mark 2, 4 through 7. Important vocabulary. Blasphemy. The accordance definition, G988. Slander, distraction, I'm sorry, detraction, speech injurious to another's good name, impious and reproach speech injuries to divine majesty. All right, before she reads that, I'm going to, and just to get some interaction, again, we, um, I promise to stay as close to that timeline as possible. We only got to get through 10 points in identifying the beast, and we're already in the midst of uh, point number four, thank God. But I'm going to take the time, matter of fact, I'm going to ask one of you to read for me, please, to spare my voice. The um, definitions of blasphemy in John it's right in your text, chapter 10, verses 27 to 33. Can someone read that for me? Then can someone find uh, Mark, chapter 2, verse 4 through 7, say amen and read that so we can see uh, what the Bible defines as blasphemy. And to make sure we're on the same page, why this is important, because again, the beasts, whoever the kingdom is that has the mark, they are guilty of blasphemy, of making blasphemous comments, of bearing blasphemous titles, of doing things that the Bible proclaims to be, uh, without question, blasphemy. Can someone please say amen and read the uh, scripture in John dealing with blasphemy? And someone grab one in Mark, say amen and read that for me. Anyone, John 10, 27 33. I'll read it. John chapter 10, beginning of verse 27, the Bible says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself who? God. God. So when you make yourself God and proclaim to be God and stand in that office, the Bible defines that as what? Blasphemy. 
Do I have a reader for Amen. Mark 2, 4-7? Amen. Mark 2, 4-7. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. For there was a certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why do this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? So the second uh, way you can blaspheme is to claim to do what? Forgive sins. Forgive claim to forgive sins. So again, whoever is this specific kingdom that we're about to read, they have to be guilty of both. Making blasphemous comments to be God and also claiming to be able to forgive sins. Uh, let's see if that falls in line with point number four. Please continue reading. Examples of papacy blasphemous claims. Leo X blasphemous blasphemously styled himself the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And who, who do we know that to be? Jesus Christ. Christ. And Christ alone. But being a, uh, you know, a Roman uh, affiliate, he called himself uh, what we know to be Christ's title. Leo XII allowed himself to be called the Lord our God. Pope Martin V called himself the Most Holy and most happy, who is the arbiter of heaven and the Lord of the earth, the successor of St. Peter, the anointed of the Lord, the master of the universe, the father of kings, the light of the world. That dude was crazy. you on. He shall, oh, it's giving everybody a chance to get their mm's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he shall speak great words against the most high, Sermon on this quasi deus liquorter. Okay. I don't speak that language. <laughs> he shall speak as if he were God. So St. Jerome quote, quotes from Symmachus to none can this apply so well or so fully as to the popes of Rome. They have assumed infallibility, which belongs only to God. They profess to forgive sins, which belongs only to God. They profess to open and shut heaven, which belongs only to God. They profess to be higher than all the kings of the earth, which belongs only to God. And they go beyond God in pretending to loose whole nations from their oath of allegiance to their kings, when such kings do not please them. And they go against God when they give indulgences for sin. This is the worst of all blasphemies. And shall wear out the saints by wars, crusades, massacres, inquisitions, and persecutions of all kinds. What in this way have they not done against all those who have protested against their innovations and refused to submit to their idolatrous worship? Witness the exterminating crusades published against the Waldenses, the, the Albenesis. Okay, you can jump in any time. Witness John Huss and Jerome of Proud. Witness the Smithfield fires in England. Witness God and man against this bloody, persecuting, ruthless, and impure church. And think the changed times and laws, appointing fasts and feasts, canonizing persons whom he chooses to call saints, granting pardons and indulgences for sin, instituting new modes of worship utterly unknown to the Christian church, new articles of faith, new rules of practice, and reversing with pleasure the laws both of God and man. Died A. Clark on Daniel 7, 25. So I think without question, we see that um, they also fit that claim that they have, they are guilty of blasphemy, which is point number four. So um, I think we would all agree that we're four for four thus far. Um, point five. Rule for 42 months, 
which is actually what is